Hi, thanks for me joining me, Adriana Hamaker. I'm the founder of HipGeeks Media and a senior contributor to crypto news site Decrypt. Um, and I'd like uh, to welcome you and also to welcome Ryan Selkis, um, who's the founder and CEO of Masari, um, analytics and data company extraordinaire. Um, Ryan, welcome. Thank you for having me. Uh, now, few people are clued up as much as you about what is happening in the crypto world. Um, I mean, you've been early in all things crypto, from Bitcoin to Ethereum, and now this huge explosion in Web3 and looking at where the, all this is going. What advice have you got for the entrepreneurs and developers participating in this global hackathon, Supernova? Well, I, you know, first off, just try to have fun with it and and learn as much from as many people as possible during uh, during the initial foray. I think yeah, there's no substitute for building within the space. Um, you can be a bystander uh, in the industry, you can be a speculator for a long time, but until you're actually immersed uh, in the product, you know, even as a user, right? Uh, even as a non-developer, I, I think it's tough to really uh, get excited and 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 see the future uh, that's emerging um, and, and kind of where you might be able to fit into it. So uh, excited to see some of the outputs from uh, from this event. So these, I mean, these guys are getting their hands dirty. They're kind of gearing up for um, loads of coffee, no sleep, reinventing the internet on the blockchain. As I mean, many people say that is the dream of Web3. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, all, there's all these hackathon tracks. There are all these applications. We've got DeFi, we've got NFTs, gaming, metaverse, social media, developer tooling. I mean, what's, should we start with maybe DeFi? What, what should, um, what, or based on what you've seen, what should people be building? Well, that's a that's a, a wide open question. Yeah, I think um, uh, we've seen a, a lot of, uh, exciting innovation around decentralized exchange, around uh, lending and other you know, traditional financial uh, services protocols. What um, what we haven't really seen too much of is in how to you know, bridge between different protocols, and and obviously with this this community, it's it's going to be uh, particularly important. I think that's that's where the um, the greatest pain point currently lives. How do you actually uh, bridge from from layer one to layer two, uh, and from you know across other layer ones or across other modular blockchains, so that um, you don't fragment liquidity, um, but you're also not getting crippled by high fees, right? So this this is certainly true with Ethereum. I think it's becoming true with with you know, most blockchains right now. How do you solve this uh, dilemma of moving to the lowest cost blockchain uh, where where the fees are going to be reasonable, uh, having secure settlement between different um, blockchains and, and ultimately um, making sure that you can you know, cross collateralize assets uh, and, and it, it works fluidly from an end user experience. So I think part of that's a, um, a technical issue when it comes to bridging protocols. Uh, part of it is a front end issue from a, uh, abstracting away the pain from the user experience. Right. And how are we with that? Because obviously, you know, DeFi protocols, they have a reputation for being a bit clunky and not looking at user experience. So how are we doing in that respect? I think people are getting compensated for how early we are and, and how uh, poor most of the UX is. Yeah, you know, there are some good teams, uh, of course, that are, are, are working really hard on fixing some of these issues, but um, there's just a lot to recreate. And for all intents and purposes, DeFi is about two years old. Uh, I would argue it didn't really kind of kick in to you know, have its zero to one moment until the birth of yield farming in, in mid 2020. Uh, so we're, we're just coming up on the two year anniversary of the compound launch, for instance. And that really kind of kickstarted you know, a, a whole uh, bunch of activity on the DeFi side. So um, I think, uh, as you know, the, the markets have um, uh, spiked and then kind of came back down to earth, and then you know all these other venture funds have raised um, a tremendous amount of capital to deploy into the infrastructure and installation phase. That's where we're going to start to see um, some some really clever application designs uh, that kind of build on all these other you know, building blocks that have been um, uh, laid the last two years. 
and uh, and some of these you know, user issues will 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 start to get solved uh, piece by piece. But uh, you know, I think that that comes down to the builders that are participating uh, in this event versus uh, you know maybe self-explanatory when we're just talking about uh, the the broad strokes. So um, people are going to be building all these these in these different areas, and you yourself mm-hmm. have. Um, stressed how important for Web3 NFTs are likely to be, um, particularly in your um, annual kind of research opus. Um, I mean, what did it come into this year? In at this year, something like 120 pages? <laughs> uh, one, 165. Oh, my God. I mean, I can't say I've read all of it, but what I did read was absolutely you know great great insights there but you say that um nfts are going to be playing a a very big part in the whole um web3 ecosystem so can you just talk a little bit about that and and what aspects of nfts are going to be important well uh discrete assets are collectively more valuable than fungible assets if if you just look at the economy globally but especially between you know real estate Insurance products. Um, there's there's massive industries that haven't really been touched yet um, from the the crypto crowd, and we're starting to see digital real estate and digital goods as as you know, some of the first apps that look like toys, particularly you know in gaming and and you know, kind of metaverse applications. But um, and then of course like the the profile picture you know, movement and NFTs. Um, I really think about NFTs. I mean, NFTs are just a a, a wrapper for any. Um, unique piece of, uh, of data. And as we, um, as we kind of move into the, the next couple of years, I think one of the uh, most exciting applications is going to be around um, digital credentials uh, and, and digital identity. You, you can think about any you know, packet of data um, that's wrapped in an NFT as, as a, a component of digital identity. So you know you'll have your your ENS name, you'll have your profile picture, you'll have your um, uh, maybe a data record for a given app uh, that you're using. You'll you'll be able to permission out access to to certain um, uh, things like PO apps, you know, proof of uh, of attendance or, or kind of proof of some credential, and um, and that can be done on an opt in basis. So we're just starting to scratch the surface in terms of how you can think about NFTs for um, not only you know. Uh, virtual goods, but uh, transferable reputation and uh, and and signaling purposes. So the uh, there's a number of teams that are kind of working on that right now. Um, this is this you know an especially big problem in DAO governance or or you know working with anonymous or, or pseudonymous contributors. Um, and uh, and 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 those are some of the areas that I think we're going to be able to um, really unlock a, a, a tremendous amount of. Uh, human capital uh, as, uh, as as more contributors you know come into the fold and and some of them might want to um, uh, selectively disclose kind of where where their experience is and, and kind of what uh, what type of capabilities they have when they're contributing to an open project. Identity sounds like a, a, an amazingly valuable area. I mean, particularly for all those people who say, well, you know, what are the applications? What are the really valuable applications apart from financial based stuff that this is good for? Um, I mean, I'm keen to know if because people criticize these kind of Web2 platforms coming in to Web3, but could they maybe help in terms of moving something like identity services to things like, I don't know, all these checks needed for Ukrainian refugees, for instance, the problems with identifying people who are crossing, you know, without passports. Can you see any of that happening anytime soon, a crossover between, you know, what we, for what we really need these things for? I think it's more likely that we'll see crossover between Web 2 firms and, and Web 3 protocols than uh, near term movement on web uh, or, or you know, kind of traditional finance firms and DeFi. Um, and uh, that's pretty simple. You know, financial regulation is, is, is much more difficult to get around and, and, and make progress and um, versus something like digital identity where you know, it's all opt in and, and there's no uh, there's not necessarily financial transactions you know, kind of in, embedded in, in some of those apps. So um, I do think uh, you know, we will see you know Meta and and some of the other you know, big tech companies start to um, dabble with with different Web three 
protocols, Twitter, you know, now the, the buzz with, with Twitter is Elon going to take over and, uh, and will Blue Sky and, and kind of the open sourcing of, of some of the, their algorithms uh, really come better, uh, more, more to the fore. Uh, we'll see, right? Uh, there's, there's still a lot that has to happen but, you know, before that, you, that comes to fruition. But I do think um, those are you know, the social media uh, companies and those networks are probably two of the ones that are more likely um, to see you know, kind of real in-depth uh, innovation on the Web3 side um, in the next couple of years. So, I mean, some of that, what you've been talking about is called, from what I understand, it's SoFi, right? So, like, um, DeFi, Soho, NoHo. So, we've got got so, SoFi. I know um, there are a couple of Definity apps that are already building big in that area. But, um, I mean, it's still very, very early days, isn't it, for, for SoFi? What, what, are de- what should be what should developers be be doing to kind of move things along? Is it marketing based as well? Uh, I mean, I think it's building a product that is uniquely interesting on its own two feet and then uses token incentives to, to catalyze the growth of the network. Um, it doesn't really matter if you have a, a token model. If, uh, if people are going uh, to use a given protocol just so that they can farm the rewards, and um, and and you know make some money. The whole user experience for for a social application like that it's it's pretty pretty tainted. Um, so I think the best bet is you know, build something that's interesting and valuable. And then if you can use a token for um, curation or kind of incentives uh, or um, making uh, the 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 revenue that the protocol generates uh, more community owned and 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 kind of reallocated. Those are um, I, I think. That's interesting. Um, if you're just starting with a token first and uh, and and trying to figure out like how to create a good user experience after that, I think we've seen you know uh, time and time again that that's not a a great way to start a, a social app. And arguably, it is for something like a DeFi protocol because it's um, it's financial by um, it's intrinsically financial versus uh, something that's like a, a social group or something that aims to compete seriously with Twitter or Facebook um, where. The tokens should be used for you know curation and um, and kind of the resilience of kind of hosting the service versus uh, directly rewarding and monetizing day one users. Many of the the, the entrepreneurs um, and developers that are participating in in Supernova, I mean, many of them are, are looking to build the next Web three um, thing, the big thing. So I don't know what do what do you hope to see. Um, as a founder um, and also as an investor who's been tracking these trends for for so many years, what would really excite you? In uh, in my annual report, I, I kind of spoke about a, a couple of core themes. We already touched on a couple of them. Um, so I think NFTs um, and and DAOs uh, are interesting, but they're they're uh, severely lacking in infrastructure, and then kind of the interoperability component of crypto is is uh, se- severely lacking as well, both from a UX standpoint and uh, just from a, a security standpoint. Right, these bridges between different um, different blockchains. Um, the other uh, area that I, I think we're going to continue to see a lot of development is around uh, zk snarks and other uh, privacy preserving technologies. Um, so for for teams that are working on solving. Uh, any of those you know, issues, I, I, I think those are, are um, massive opportunities. Um, privacy in particular, uh, getting the balance right between selective disclosure and um, general auditability of, uh, of the base blockchains is, is kind of the holy grail and, and something that we have, to, um, we have to be mindful of and solve for. Okay, so I mean the the areas that you and and possibly sort of I don't know VCs as well are looking at interoperability, zk snarks, and privacy. I mean we can sort of safely say that this is the lines that people should be thinking along when they're developing um, this year at least. Things move so quickly. Uh, well, I mean it, yes, to a certain extent, but not necessarily. I mean you know uh, build things that are earlier non-consensus and and right and and they'll ultimately you know you can be uh early and kind of create a category if you build uh, a product that that no one else has thought of so um those aren't exclusively the things that uh, that I'm excited about but um but just just a couple that that came to mind as major trends and and quite frankly they're 
uh, they're probably some of the bubblier um, trends that are getting funded right now um, versus where they were at the end of last year. Yeah, I mean, there's certainly no um, lack of money being invested in in Web3, right? So, you know, the developers need to know exactly what the, you know, what people are, are wanting, what people are, are, are looking for. So, um, I mean, it's all kicking off. So um, a last word from you, perhaps, as to kind of, you know, what, what the future and what should people have in mind um, when, you know, when they've got their heads down and what's the, what's the most important thing that they should be thinking about, about Web3? Uh, well, I, I would think about it as a marathon. I think we're we're past the bull market phase uh, at this point, so you know, we're. Uh, I don't necessarily think that we'll we'll see you know a, a massive uh, winter or, or prolonged bear market. We could, um, you know, certainly if 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 the the macro economy uh, goes into a recession. But um, really, it's just about kind of building for the next five years, um, keeping that in mind. Uh, if you're if you're building tooling in the infrastructure side, and then just being you know, militant about you know, trying to identify um, early product market fit and 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 I just address some of the pain points that um, builders in the NFT, the DAO, the DeFi landscape are are, are experiencing day in day out. And um, what happens what tends to happen in crypto is every single time that there's a, a, a glaring problem or something that people think of as a fatal flaw within. The industry, uh, someone steps up, solves it, and uh, and and builds a, a billion dollar company or protocol uh, around that solution. So I, I think um, you know, excited to see, like I said, what comes out of, of this event. And uh, uh, the most interesting things are going to be probably uh, areas that, that we didn't even touch on that I, I haven't really been thinking about. Well, I mean, bear markets are good for building, right? Um, that's kind of what happened in in 2018 from my opinion anyway i i don't know about yours but when possibly people are less focused on the price and more <laughs> focused on development that's when the magic happens yep exactly okay well we wish everyone the best who's going to be building all these amazing things um thanks very much ryan for talking to me today and um good luck with supernova everyone thank you yes good luck